At this point, we already know how to interact with Genexus Enterprise AI. We know its back office and front end, and we know how to create assistants and test them, either by editing the prompt through the playground or via API. Now let's see an example of how to interact with our assistants from a Genexus knowledge base. The objective is to interact with our marketing assistant so that it returns the formal description of the product indicated by the user. All right, in our KB, we have a simple product transaction with an ID and name to which we've applied the work with for web pattern. Our objective is to request the description of the product from the main screen generated by applying this pattern. For that, in the instance of the applied pattern, we have defined two variables. The description variable that the user will click on and has the text get description, and the assistant description variable that will receive the description returned by the assistant. Okay, the goal now is to define the procedure that will establish the interaction with the marketing assistant and will return the desired description. Although we could create a blank procedure and start defining the connection data through a variable of HTTP client type, what we will do is to give Genexus the curl sample that we need to make the post. And Genexus will return the base structure for this definition. We go to the Tool, Application Integration menu option and choose Curl Inspector. We name it My Chat Assistant and paste the sample which is available, as we already know, in the Genexus Enterprise AI technical documentation. We click on OK, and in the KB Explorer window, we can see that the procedure named My Chat Assistant has been created and that it provides the basics of what we need. A variable called HTTP Client has been defined based on the data type of the same name. This data type allows you to create a request, send it to our URL, and read the results. So what should we do now? Replace the parameters with the information of our context. The first thing to specify is whether the call will be made using a secure protocol or not. For this, we must declare the secure method. The value zero, which is the default value, indicates that the HTTP protocol will be used and the value 1 indicates that the HTTPS protocol will be used. We indicate the value 1. Next, we declare the project API token that we copied from the platform beforehand. Now we'll focus on the body of the request. What we'll do is similar to what we did from Postman when we tested the assistant via API. First of all, we indicate the name of the assistant, which in this case is marketing assistant. Now let's think about this. Our assistant must return the description of the product specified by the user. Therefore, the product must be received by parameter in this procedure. Therefore, we declare the par rule so that the procedure receives the product name and returns the description. We return to the source, and in the messages group, we see the content, which, as we know, corresponds to the user's input. We modify it so that it's parameterized and takes in each case the name of the product that's received by parameter. We also indicate the revision of the assistant we want to use. We must now define the execution of the post, and for that, we must complete the path with backslash chat. We've already defined the execution of the query. What should we do now? Receive the response from the assistant and return only the product description. If we look at the execution of the query and the response received in Postman, we see that it looks like a structure where the description we're interested in is stored in the content item of the first element of the choices collection. We save it as JSON. We go back to our KB and import this JSON file 
so that Genexus automatically creates the structured data type that represents it. For that, we go to Tools, Application Integration, JSON Import. We name it My Assistant Response and load the file. We select OK and see the corresponding SDT created. Let's look at its structure. Here's the item we're looking for. Then we define the my assistant response variable based on the same data type and load it with the response, applying the from JSON method that requires a string. Let's look at the structured data again. To get to the content item, we must retrieve the choices collection. So we define the my choices variable based on the data type my assistant response dot choices item. It must be a collection, so we select the is collection checkbox. We load the collection. Finally, in the product description variable, which is the return variable of the procedure, we load the value of content of item one of the collection, which is where the answer we want from the assistant is stored. All right, what should we do now? Call this procedure from the WW product web panel. To do so, in the events tab, we define the click event applied to the description variable. To test it, we press F5. We run the web panel, choose a product, and click on Get Description. Then we see the answer returned by the assistant. 